Crystal Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about a multi-purpose piece of gear that's probably also one of my favorite luxury items and that is the backpacking umbrella. I've used a myriad of backpacking umbrellas over the years for different purposes, obviously for the rain, but also to block the heat and the sun when I'm backpacking in exposed areas like the desert. If I'm going backpacking and there is a chance of rain or I'm in a hot exposed area, then I'm definitely going to bring my umbrella. I still carry my rain gear even if I have an umbrella. But I've found, especially in cold rain, that having an umbrella helps keep my body warmer because the umbrella helps shield my upper body and therefore it's not constantly getting cold soaking rain on it and sucking out my body heat. It stays more dry or at least doesn't just get pelted with rain nonstop and therefore it really does make a difference in my warmth. Also, when it's raining all day long, and you're not really finding anywhere to take cover under dense bushes or trees, having the ability to just sit down, have your umbrella over you, and eat a snack can be a big game changer mentally. Also, having camera equipment because I'm recording videos while I'm out in nature for this channel, it gives me the ability to shield that camera equipment so I'm not just like ruining everything. And even if you're not somebody who's gonna be carrying camera equipment to document your experience, just simply using your phone for navigation or to send a text message, if you have your phone out in the rain, the droplets on the screen can make it act wonky. So having that umbrella to shield your phone from the rain while you're trying to navigate or send communication, it really makes a big difference. For the heat, obviously it's nice to have the umbrella to shade you and block you from some of the heat while you're walking, but to sit down and take a break even and have instant shade or if you're in the heat of the desert on the Pacific Crest Trail during a through hike, being able to take a little siesta really anywhere that you need to is a great option. And just a little bonus point for the Silver Reflectix umbrella making it more multi-purpose, it could be a useful tool in a search and rescue situation where they're looking for you from overhead. And it was just today before this video came out, now that it's been over a year, that I realized when I was in my search and rescue situation in the Sawtooths in Idaho, I used my very light blue tent, which kind of blended in with the surroundings to flag down search and rescue, and it did work, but I actually had my Silver Reflectix umbrella with me and didn't even think to use that, and I feel like it would have been more helpful. So keep that in mind in case you're in that situation. So if you're sold on trying an umbrella while backpacking, what exactly should you look for when selecting one? First, the diameter or the open width of the umbrella. You want an umbrella that gives enough coverage to block you from the rain adequately or to give you enough shade, but you don't want it so large that it's like extremely heavy or it can't fit through the trail where you have some tree cover because it's scrubbing up against everything. From my experience, I'd say anything from like three feet to three and a half feet is probably gonna be a good rule of thumb when picking out the size of an umbrella. And it'll give you coverage without being like ridiculously large. Weight, of course, you don't wanna have to carry any extra weight. If you could find an umbrella that weighs zero ounces, that would be fantastic. The lightest I've seen that I would be comfortable using is actually 6.8 ounces, and that's made by Z-Packs. Anything lighter than that, you may have issues with my next point, which is durability. For durability, you have to think about first, what is the fabric of the umbrella made out of? Most of the time, it's gonna be polyester, and you might see a different density like 210T or 250T. What that means is the thread count in a square inch of fabric. So obviously the higher the number, the more dense the fabric is gonna be, the more durable, but also the heavier. But with durability, it's not only about the fabric of the umbrella itself, but also like the skeleton. So 
the handle and what I call the spokes or the ribs of the umbrella. I've had some like five to ten dollar Amazon special umbrellas that are made out of aluminum and they last for a little while but eventually one of the spokes will break and it loses its durability and stability but you know it was only like five to ten bucks. Fiberglass hardware umbrellas are said to be more durable but I've had one that was made out of fiberglass and I used it on a really windy day and day two of my through hike, I snapped one of the spokes on my umbrella. So I learned a valuable lesson with a $50 umbrella that yes, they might be more durable, but they're not gonna withstand, you know, hurricane winds. Next, you have to consider color and UV blocking ability. A lot of people just wanna pick a colorful, you know, pretty umbrella. But when you're doing something like backpacking, for me at least, it's more about the functionality of the gear than really what it looks like. So are you wanting it to block out the sun's rays or are you gonna be using it more on a green tunnel type trail like the Appalachian Trail, for example? And in that instance, if you're just wanting it to protect you from the rain, then you probably could go with a bright, cute color if that's what you're shopping for. But if I'm using this umbrella in the desert, then I definitely want something that's like UPF 50 plus, and it's gonna protect me from the sun's harmful rays. Also, the umbrella that you pick out color-wise can affect what temperature it's going to be up under that umbrella and how much heat you're actually blocking out. So in that instance, I'm going to look for an umbrella that's got a rating of like UPF 50 plus, and I'm probably going to opt for one of the Reflectix umbrellas, the silver looking ones that look like you're trying to protect your brain from the aliens. It seems best to go with a silver umbrella then black or darker color, and then lighter colors. Make sure if you're planning to use your sun umbrella in the rain also, that it is made from a waterproof material and it's not exclusively for sun protection. You should also think about how compact you need an umbrella to be. Some of them are going to have a fixed handle. And so for those, the way I carry them is in my cup holder on the side of my pack. But if you don't, have cup holders on your pack or maybe they're just already maxed out you've got you know so many things in them so many water bottles whatever that you don't have room then you might want to opt for something that also has a telescoping handle and is going to break down in a very compact way that way you could put it in your pack or you know on the pocket on the outside of your pack like the big pocket so something else to consider. And finally, you have to consider cost. Like I mentioned before, you can find umbrellas that range from like $5 up to 50 bucks for backpacking. And of course, all of the factors that we've discussed so far will go into the pricing of that umbrella. So just for a little exercise in how I would go about selecting an umbrella, I want to present to you two different options that are on Amazon. First, we've got just a black Amazon special random brand. It looks like it has decent reviews at 4.5 stars and is currently listed for $8.99. It's made from 250T polyester, so it's gonna be durable enough for what you wanna do. And it has an aluminum handle with fiberglass reinforced spokes or ribs. It's rated for UV protection at 50 plus UPF, and it claims to block out 99% of UV rays. It weighs 12 ounces and offers 42.5 inches, or that's about three and a half feet of coverage when it's opened up. And finally, this one breaks down pretty compact because it's got the telescoping handle. Next, we have a Six Moon Designs Base Silver Shadow Ultralight with a 4.6 star rating and it's currently listed for $40. The fabric is made from 210T polyester, so it's still gonna be pretty durable. The shaft and ribs are made completely from fiberglass, so that's going to contribute to it being more lightweight and durable as far as the hardware goes. It only weighs 8.9 ounces, so that's a little over three ounces lighter 
for the silver umbrella than the black umbrella. It is also rated at 50 plus UPF for UV protection and it has a width of 37 inches so just over three feet so you're gonna have a little less coverage with this umbrella but as far as offering shade and protecting you from the rain, I think it would still be adequate. It does have a waterproof coating and can be used in the rain. And for this one, the material obviously collapses, but the handle is fixed, so it's not going to be as compact. So my initial thoughts come down to, okay, I've got this black umbrella, I've got the silver umbrella. What is my purpose with this umbrella. Am I gonna be going out and doing, uh, like I mentioned before, a green tunnel trail where I'm not really worried about protection from the sun? Well, then the black umbrella may offer exactly what I need for $30 less and more coverage from the rain than the silver umbrella would offer. Now, it is heavier at a little over three ounces more, especially if I'm using this umbrella for day hacks more than backpacking trips or for something like the West Highland Way, where I'm staying in towns along the way, or the Camino de Santiago in the cooler season, then this umbrella may not bother me that it's three ounces heavier because I don't have a lot of pack weight anyway. But if I'm going somewhere like the desert, then I'm definitely going to opt for the Silver Reflectix umbrella because it's three ounces lighter. And if I'm worried about heat, I'm probably going to be carrying more water weight anyway. So saving three ounces might really mean a lot. And then I'm going to want something that obviously keeps me cooler. So hands down, I'd go with the silver one. I should say there is something to be said for brand recognition as well. I do trust Six Moon Designs and their claim more than a random brand on Amazon, but I feel like that's common knowledge. And if you want to see these umbrellas for yourself, there will be a link in the video description for each of them. So after you've selected what umbrella you want, there are some other things to consider. First, how you want to carry it. Me personally, I prefer just to hold my umbrella in my hand, but you should know that they do have hands-free attachments that you can put on your shoulder strap of your pack. I just like to be able to shift mine around how I want to, when I want to, but some people really do want the hands free. I will say that I always thought that I'd get like tired of just holding the umbrella, but I, I really don't. Also, you should be aware of situations where it's really just not a good idea to use your umbrella. One, if it's super windy, your umbrella can invert, one of the spokes can break. It's just best to put them up when it's windy. And this could happen when it's really sunny and hot or when it's cold and wet. And also probably not the best idea to use them during a lightning storm, you know, making yourself even taller. And especially if you're holding like a metal framed umbrella. And then it could also be problematic if you're on a super narrow trail that's got like a lot of dense foliage and you're brushing into trees and you know it's starting to um, catch on your umbrella and bend it invert it or you know pierce the fabric so it definitely doesn't hurt to scout out you know what the weather is going to do while you're out on trail and also you know kind of what your trail conditions are going to be like is it very overgrown or is it a nice manicured trail and also keep in mind that an umbrella should not be your only sun slash rain protection you should still make sure you have other stuff in case you are in those situations for some reason where you can't use your umbrella. But I definitely do think overall that umbrellas are worth the added weight, even in those rare instances where you can't use it while you're walking down the trail. They have just offered me overall when they've come in handy a morale boost from a completely opposite ends of the spectrum you know situations like extreme heat and really frigid rain all right y'all well that is all i have for you today if you have any umbrellas that you've become particularly fond of i would love to hear about those in the comments below or if you have any questions about my experience with umbrellas i'll be happy to answer those thank y'all so much for watching don't forget to share with a friend if you found this video useful and we will see y'all next time